I'm Violet Incredible and your Skyline Scoop starts right now. Good morning, Raiders. We have no announcements, just our daily segments. To start off, we have Ben Book of the Day. Hey, Raiders. It's your friendly neighborhood librarian, Mrs. Broomhall, here to highlight the final banned book of the week. But before we get into that, I wanted to remind you what you can do to celebrate intellectual freedom all year long. Step one, read what makes your heart happy. Step two, don't let anyone tell you that you can't. So the book I've chosen to highlight today is called This One Summer by Jillian and Mariko Tamaki. It is 2016's most challenged book because of its inclusion of LGBTQ plus characters and mature themes. We encourage you to come by the library and check out this book or any others and exercise your right to read. Thank you so much for joining us this week. See you later, Raiders. Now let's go with Alejandro with sports. Good morning, Raiders. I'm Alejandro Torres here with a special guest. Last Friday, the volleyball team took Berkner High School. Jose went down and took a closer look. So how are y'all feeling now? Bro, we made it! We made it! And we made history, We made history! We made history. I'm proud of our team! I'm proud of them, y'all. I'm proud of them. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We made history. I don't know when the last time Skyline had been breaking, yeah. but we was on it tonight. Yeah. We went to five games, but we still had it. Period. You know, we worked together as a team. I think we did really good, hustling, did it on the blocks, on the serves, on the tips. I think we did pretty good. Oh, I'm proud of y'all, man. I'm so proud. Yeah. Don't forget, tonight the Lady Raiders will take on Lake Highlands in the Mayo Gym at 5.30 p.m. Next, we have Joseph with some of our varsity football players. My name is Joseph, and I'm here with Skynet News. I'm here with a couple of football players. I'm here with Cameron Bradford. Corey Davis. Ty McDonald. How do you feel this season's gonna go? I feel the season's gonna be great. The only thing I do is do our part and be disciplined. Coach, I always told us do your part and go, go to state, state bound. How does it feel being a student athlete at Skyline High School? Coming from Duncanville, I really feel amazing. I just like how the coaches treat me and all. What do you like here better than Duncanville? I like that I can go up to a coach and ask him what I'm feeling, can he help me with a class and all. Okay, and for you, being our only senior, what do you feel like you're going to do after high school? Right now, I go to college, then go to the NFL. But if the NFL don't work, I'm going to be dedicated to do something else in my life. Okay. Who do all do y'all look up to in the NFL? Russell Wilson. DK Metcalf. Ray Lewis. Okay. And for you, with all the schools looking at you right now, why Texas at all of them? Man, Texas, where is that? The fans lay out. Everybody love it. Coaches love you, a lot of support, they throw the ball, just a lot of support from them. Another day, Texas, baby, hook them. And that's it for Skynet News. Make sure to tune in next week to see our homecoming recap. That's all for this week, Raiders. Make sure you go out there and support our Skyline teams. Let's go Raiders. Here's Joe with the trivia. This place was founded in 1905 and is now the brightest city in the world. There are 15,000 miles of neon tubing and 60,000 pounds of shrimp eaten every year. There are also 300 weddings per day in this party city. Next up is Keeping Up with Amy and Adam. Hi guys, it's Amy from Skynet and today I'm here with... Yasmin Figueroa. These met Yasmin. What's the weirdest thing you've ever seen? Well, one time I was in, riding the bus home and it was in the bus stop. There was this man, like he straight took off his and started peeing and I was just like... The weirdest thing I've ever seen was a naked man behind the bush. When I was coming home from middle school, I walked home. I just turned around and kept walking. Traumatized. So guys, what's the weirdest thing y'all ever seen? Ew. What about you? What's the weirdest thing you've ever seen? Probably people putting ketchup on their eggs. That's not weird. That's nasty. I'm sorry. The weirdest thing I've ever seen? Somebody putting applesauce on their pork chop.
now for your lunch menu. Today's menu will be pizza and chicken nuggets. If those don't interest you, there will also be PB and J boxes. For your sides, there will be corn, salad, celery sticks, and a cherry crisp. To drink, there will be milk and juice. Have a nice lunch, Raiders! Lastly, here's Joe's trivia answer. If you want to change the world, start off by making your bed. If you make your bed every morning, you will have accomplished the first task of the day. It will give you a small sense of pride, and it will encourage you to do another task, and another, and another. And by the end of the day, that one task completed will have turned into many tasks completed. Making your bed will also reinforce the fact that the little things in life matter. If you can't do the little things right, you'll never be able to do the big things right. And if by chance you have a miserable day, you will come home to a bed that is made. That you made. And a made bed gives you encouragement that tomorrow will be better. To pass SEAL training, there are a series of long swims that must be completed. One is the night swim. Before the swim, the instructors joyfully brief the students on all the species of sharks that inhabit the waters off San Clemente. They assure you, however, that no student has ever been eaten by a shark, at least not that they can remember. But you are also taught that if a shark begins to circle your position, stand your ground. Do not swim away. Do not act afraid. And if the shark, hungry for a midnight snack, darts towards you, then summons up all your strength and punch him in the snout and he will turn and swim away. There are a lot of sharks in the world. If you hope to complete the swim, you will have to deal with them. So if you want to change the world, don't back down from the sharks. Over a few weeks of difficult training, my SEAL class, which started with 150 men, was down to just 42. There were now six boat crews of seven men each. I was in the boat with the tall guys, but the best boat crew we had was made up of the little guys, the Munchkin crew, we called them. No one was over five foot five. The Munchkin boat crew had one American Indian, one African American, one Polish American, one Greek American, one Italian American, and two tough kids from the Midwest. They out paddled, out ran, and out swam all the other boat crews. The big men in the other boat crews would always make good natured fun of the tiny little flippers the munchkins put on their tiny little feet prior to every swim. But somehow these little guys from every corner of the nation and the world always had the last laugh, swimming faster than everyone and reaching the shore long before the rest of us. SEAL training was a great equalizer. Nothing mattered but your will to succeed, not your color, not your ethnic background, not your education, not your social status. If you want to change the world, measure a person by the size of their heart not by the size of their flippers. The ninth week of training is referred to as Hell Week. It is six days of no sleep, constant physical and mental harassment, and one special day at the Mud Flats. The Mud Flats are an area between San Diego and Tijuana where the water runs off and creates the Tijuana Sloughs, a swampy patch of terrain where the mud will engulf you. It is on Wednesday of Hell Week but you paddle down in the mud flats and spend the next 15 hours trying to survive the freezing cold, the howling wind, and the incessant pressure to quit from the instructors. As the sun began to set that Wednesday evening, my training class, having committed some egregious infraction of the rules, was ordered into the mud. The mud consumed each man till there was nothing visible but our heads. The instructors told us we could leave the mud if only five men would quit. Only five men, just five men, and we could get out of the oppressive cold. Looking around the mud flat, it was apparent that some students were about to give up. It was still over eight hours till the sun came up. Eight more hours of bone chilling cold. The chattering teeth and the shivering moans of the trainees were so loud, it was hard to hear anything. And then one voice began to echo through the night. One voice raised in song. The song was terribly out of tune. 
but sung with great enthusiasm. One voice became two, and two became three, and before long, everyone in the class was singing. The instructors threatened us with more time in the mud if we kept up the singing, but the singing persisted. And somehow the mud seemed a little warmer, and the wind a little tamer, and the dawn not so far away. If I have learned anything in my time traveling the world, it is the power of hope. The power of one person, a Washington, a Lincoln, King, Mandela, and even a young girl from Pakistan, Malala. One person can change the world by giving people hope. So if you want to change the world, start each day with a task completed. Find someone to help you through life. Respect everyone. Know that life is not fair and that you will fail often. But if you take some risks, step up when the times are the toughest, face down the bullies, lift up the downtrodden, and never ever give up. If you do these things, the next generation and the generations that follow will live in a world far better than the one we have today. And what started here will indeed have changed the world for the better. That's all we have for today, Raiders. Make sure to catch up on all things Skyline by following us at Skyline Broadcasting. And make sure to never miss an episode of your Skyline School by texting SKYN to 81010. I'm Violet Incredible, and from here with everybody at Skynet, thanks for watching. It's such a nice day.